Okay, I'm just going to do this because I just want to muddle my way through this, but this is Kershaw ZT 2021 new models. Not all of them, just some of them, but I have them and let's get to it. And I, uh, you know, just like any brand, some of them I like, some of them I don't. Okay, that's fine. Dominic sent these to me from Kershaw uh, and, you know, they're not mine to keep, but they're mine to uh, look over and pass on. And so I thought, before I do my video with Andrew at Kershaw, apparently Andrew's the one I'm going to do my video with for Kershaw ZT 2021, since they're not having the SHOT Show, and I usually do a video with him there. Uh, so we're going to do it on Zoom or something like that and publish it. But... I just wanted to do this all on my lonesome with you guys and introduce you to some of the knives. And, you know, I got to kind of point out the ones that I was interested in maybe talking about on our little Zoom meeting. And this is the highball because, you know, I'm always at the bar, so you got to have a highball, right? I'm not going to make the joke about, never mind, I don't even want to go into that. Um, highball XL. Okay. There's a backspacer, deep carry pocket clip, right or left hand. Flipper tab? No. Thumb studs? No. It's a 70-20 in D2. I know you were going to go like droopy dog. Oh, it's going to be 8CR3. No, no, this is D2. And actually, when we test the Kershaw knives and i would imagine that extends into the zt as far as heat treat or as far as rockwell hardness i'm going to say rockwell hardness uh they've been good even the m391s that they've done like on the link and the dividend and things like that because they're made in the usa and they've come out with 20 cv steel and m390 and different things like that have been good so and the d2 has been good as well so i think this would be good and check this out okay so there's th that's it you just got this fuller or nail nick as they call it right here in the blade now 84.99 is the suggested manufacturer's price which will not be what you'll be charged okay and all the retailers come out with the knives at map manuf minimum advertised price minimum advertised price so uh excluding any sales or discounts right so uh yeah i mean it's an interesting knife i like it that the action on it is really good now it's called the xl baby so next page let's talk about it it's got d2 right oh it's 3.8 ounces not bad seven and a half inches 3.3 inch blade and it really seems like almost a bigger blade than that but let's see if they're lying no they aren't okay and it's well under eight about seven and a half overall okay so i'm not gonna do a whole daily bobber because we got too many knives so daily bobber being like width and blade width and all that kind of stuff that'll come later uh throwing them on the scales but i might check length here as i go now you got a nice little area where they've done pvd coating uh for a little color pop there so not bad what do you think and on this page it's the xl version of the highball because there was a highball and then this is the highball xl kvdt uh ball bearings and uh you know matching blue anodized pivot reversible right and left hand carry etc etc so what thinkest thou what do you think yeah interesting knife huh highball xl i like this i like the action on it you guys uh wow what a nice drop real fidget friendly yeah it feels like a chunk because it's steel but okay it's not that heavy next Let's talk about this one. And this is a big old hoss. <laughs> this is the Strata XL. Uh, this is why my camera's kind of backed up a little bit. Um, 12 inches. 12 inches of crazy, huh? Now they have a regular sized one, which is, what's regular sized if this is XL? 
Uh, what do we got? 30 and a half centimeters long overall. Um, we got what? 14 centimeters. No, no. Yeah. 14 centimeter blade length. Yeah. Pretty crazy, huh? On the back, I guess my biggest bitch is it would have been nice to have this on both sides with this same kind of uh, machining. Now, I mean, I don't mind that they expose this. You got to to get in here, but if they would have done this same kind of patterning on this and just done it around this and then had this really could have been a nice liner lock and or, uh, you know, one with a subframe and or bolster lock. So they could have put G10 over here and then this little area. But so, you know what I'm saying? Now they've got this copper and they don't call it copper. They call it copper anodized and they call this copper anodized as well. So is that real copper? I don't know, but this is a D2 blade. See right there? And this is the 2077. And it's right, it's right hand, tip up only. Okay, you can see where the screws go in there, but there's no way you can do it with this other. So that would have been nice to have done it on a, uh, you know, on a, at a liner lock type thing. So it's that Spanish uh, knife type influence. But what a hoss. I'm surprised they had the huevos to do this. Being a Spanish word for, well, several things. Um, yeah. Cool, huh? Now, here's kind of the page out of this. 119, of course, it'll be less than that. Uh, minimum advertised price. But uh, always try and make no, you know, of course... KVT bearings, uh, deep carry, extra deep carry, copper anodized decorative pivot cap and tube spacers, copper anodized, okay? Uh, you know, G front on the top and anything that I might have made note for, yeah, copying, uh, matching copper anodized, KVT, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there you go. 5.8 ounces, not horrible. And it's not very thick. And you see, you get all the blade thicknesses and everything that I'm going to, you know. So when I do these knives, just pause and take a screenshot or whatever, if that's what you want to do. So that's next. Next up is um, an interesting one called the end game. What's your end game here? Well, I don't know, buddy. And this one... Also is not an assisted opening or speed safe, whatever, <laughs> speed safe. Uh, you know, the thing is, you got to understand, I mean, in my book, Kershaw is a knife company that primarily is going to make their money through like uh, the big box stores like Walmart and stuff like that. Okay. And they're for working Joes and people who are not real um, big time knife enthusiasts, but you know, hey, they like having a pocket knife here and there, just don't want to spend a lot of money, or they're waiting for mom to do her stuff, you know, shopping in the store, and they see this in the case, and they go, hmm, this might be cool. So I know a lot of guys that are not necessarily enthusiasts, but they like pocket knives, okay? And I think that's their market. So if you're an enthusiast, and you're into mid techs and customs and high-end production, then this is probably not your favorite brand, but they've really done a lot with the Link and the Dividend and even the NORAD and and uh, the Bare Knuckle. Those are my four that I really like that Kershaw did. Those are my four because they've done a lot of those in the USA with the higher end steels. Okay, and I love all those designs. This one, I'll tell you what, I, this is kind of maybe right in there with the NORAD. I do like this design and having put this little PVD coated or anodized piece in here brought both sides together well enough to, to not make me have a problem with it. Right or left hand tip up 
it's not that big, but it's not assisted, and it's on KVT, and it flips well, and it's, uh, you know, it's D. Um, you know, so if it's D2, it's not bad. And it's the 2095, and let's take a look at what they're saying about it. It's supposed to be 99 bucks. Well, well that ain't going to be that. But end game. KVT D2 uh, Kershaw Original. So it's really straight. This was not a collaborative. I think they did a pretty good job on this. Uh, you know, design flow looks good, etc. Uh, and reversible clip. Okay. So let's see if they got anything. See, there's features here. Okay. And then there's also... Uh, specs and here's the specifications stainless steel that's a GFN that's a glass filled nylon here okay and uh, 3.9 ounces supposed to be gosh you know what that just feels okay I'm gonna break down and do this because this just mm, this feels more like more than that okay one about 110 let's roll it around okay okay so I'll trust their weights 3.9. Now, uh, not a bad little knife. It's not that small, and it's a good little EDC, so end game. Keep that in mind, okay? Chunk it off. Let's look at the little Jens Anzo design knife. Now, this is a collaborative with Jens Anzo, and this is called a capsule. It's not very expensive, and this is GFN handle. Okay, and it's 8CR13 blade steel, and I can't wipe that off. This is These knives have been out to other people. I'm probably the last guy they gave a crap about sending the knives to. So uh, there's more important uh, people on YouTube than that. But here we go. 1190 is the model number. It's a small little knife, isn't it? Now, this is... Just like a box cutter, you know, you've got a utility. I've got a couple of utility knives that do this. So there you go uh, with that. And of course, you can sharpen the blade. And of course, it's only sharpened on that side, you know, not on the top side. But real easy to carry. You can put it on a key ring, deep carry pocket clip, right or left hand looks like. So let's 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 read up on it a little bit. You know, 49 bucks, so it'll probably be... 40 or 39 or something like that when it actually comes out uh, as far as minimum advertised 8CR13, which is not something to celebrate, but blade length just under two inches. Uh, blade thickness, pretty thin. Okay, glass filled nylon, two ounces, five inches overall. Okay, and let me see if there's any features that they want. Well, Jen Zanzo. And single position deep carry right tip down. Okay. So they're saying right tip down, but they're not saying left is a possibility. I guess you can't, can you? Because of how close that is to this actuator. All right. Hey, they could have put a little uh, bottle opener on the end or something. That would have been cool, right, for a little dog like this. Yeah, interesting. All the way around. This little area is not metal, obviously. This is G10 wedged in here with the GFN, or that may be blue GFN, etc. Next. Pull that out. Let's go to this one. This is kind of interesting. The collateral. And um, this one's fairly inexpensive, so you don't have to have collateral when you go to the bank to get a loan to buy this knife. Collateral. Uh, and this looks like a G10 backspacer. It's hanging off here. Little carbon fiber insert here. They didn't do it here. That would have been nice. They needed to have done that. Okay. They needed to have put a little bit here. Balance it. I think, didn't they do that on the NORAD? I can't remember now, uh, but here's your pocket clip, not deep carry, but I'm sure you can replace it with a deep carry, right and left hand, and it's a nice 
design. Let's see what they say about it here. It's a spear point. It's speed safe. So, yeah, all the dreams just vanished, didn't they? A muted flipper tab, though. I mean, speed safe's okay for those people who are able to repair a spring, replace a spring, do all that stuff. Because you can always get with Kershaw and they'll send you another spring and you can replace it and do all that. Um, but it's kind of a hassle as opposed to, you know, having a knife where you can just, I mean, there is no spring, so you'll never have to replace a spring. Okay. Um, but okay, this would have been, I would have preferred it not to have a spring. But on the other hand, let's put it this way. There's no flipper tab to catch your thumb. So you may have had to been careful. See how the flipper tab just melts right into this bolster so it's a clean look who's our designer it says kershaw original so i guess that's their mark there and it's d2 so it's d2 it feels solid it's not a small knife uh reversible custom backspacer they don't talk about what material the backspacer is okay um and you can pause and read this stuff Okay, and then just things that I noted here, 4.3 ounces, 8 inches overall length, titanium carbonitrate coating on the handle. So collateral, interesting. Uh, I don't mind this one, really. Do you, I like the design. It flows pretty well. Blade to handle length looks good. Right or left hand. So, okay, okay. Let's go down that road now. Next. What do we got? Oh, well, we're going into maybe some of my least favorite. Um, and this one here is called the Bracket. Now, this is a bigger uh, version of NC on the back. See, I'm not big into this. You know, steel on the back, G10 on the front. You're doing all this nice little stuff on the front and on the back you're doing nothing. There's all work back here. Parties on the front. And it's just the opposite of a mullet. You know, business on the front, party in the back. But this one's party in the front and there ain't nothing going on in the back. And I don't like that. The 3455 8CR13. So... Blade steel doesn't turn me on. Speed safe doesn't turn me on. Uh, the fact that it's a cleaverish type of blade and it's got a big choil up here is the redeeming qualities. And of course, I'm not sure that I'm up with, well, the price will be lower than that. It won't be that bad. Um, XL version of the static cleaver. Now, Kershaw Originals is a designer. Assisted opening, speed safe, reversible. Hey, at least it's got reversible. And let me see if there's any other. Oh, here's the specs. So this gives you the length of 3.4 inch blade. Um, what is it? 7.75 overall, 4.3 ounces. And they just really get into, and you can read the rest of this if you want. Pause and read. Okay. Okay. Um, but no, so many things don't need the speed safe. I want the front and the back to match. Uh, that would be nice. And uh, so it could have been a subframe lock. It could have been a bolster lock. It could have been a liner lock. It could have been, they could have done an axis type lock. But nah, nah, it's, it's not, it, it's a decent sized blade. Um, I don't know. I get a little tired of everything being at or below three and a half inch and at or below three or 8.2 overall. And just everything's wallowed around in that exact same size. So that's why I was really happy seeing the Strata XL because, hey, you know, why not? Uh, and it, this look on both sides would have been cool. And you could even have put a screw here or there on the back to cover the pivot screw. And I've seen that done. And so you could have just undone the two or little screws holding the cover plate, exposed the pivot and then undone it. And you could have had a really nice 
looking thing because I like the way they did it. It's KVT, it's D2, and it's a hoss. It's a freaking hoss, but it's not right and left hand. Kind of strange. Okay, and so bracket, mm, bracket just don't hack it with me. So let me just tell you the knives that that are current favorites of mine, and I'm not sure if I've if I've got any of these four sitting here now. I've been traded out of them or whatever, but the NORAD, great looking KVT. Um, yeah, I think they have the insert stuff on the back, right? And so that's a good looking knife. Of course, the Natrix, and they made it in an XL, and they made it with D2. So, I mean, shit, that's the 777, right, from ZT. And then this, no, this is the quadruple 7. Um, yeah, and this is the bare knuckle. The bare knuckle's great, and they've done it in 20 CV. They've done it in M390. They've done it with a carbon fiber. I wouldn't buy that because the CF was on front and just nothing on the back but regular plane, and I'm going now. I'll take the whole thing like this. Actually, I'm fine with this. Actually, I'd like this in olive with just a regular stonewash blade in M390. I'd be uh, thrilled. Okay, or 20 CV. And then the dividend, they've done a bunch of different ways. This is the composite one. Uh, I like the looks of it, but if it, I was really looking for long term, I'd probably have got the exclusive or, you know, uh, stuff on the, on the dividend. I can't remember the name of the USA Blades or something that had it in M390. That kind of thing. So, uh, and I don't think there's, oh yeah, and then the link. This is just a standard production. It's in 20 CV and baby, they changed it from prior to 20, from, from 2019 to 2020, the 2020 model rocks. It still rocks and it's good and it's 20 CV and it's just a hell of a knife. It's speed safe. That's the only thing that's killing that thing. Now, I got a couple of ZT knives I'm going to show you. I'm going to start off with this one. Uh, the 762. Okay, so I got this one in, and this is very light. This is very light. I mean, I've got to be right under that pin up here to get it to balance. That's how light it is. Super crazy light. And the, the only thing is, I mean, it's a good looking knife. Come here, let me throw it on here. 2.8 ounces, you know, at 81.6 uh, grams. The only thing is, this isn't what ZT means to me, okay? Um, ZT is overbuilt. They're roughy tufty They fill the hand. They're heavy duty. And this is everything but that. Uh, it's got a subframe lock and everything. Titanium here, titanium here. And these, I believe, are titanium as well. They better be for the price. And this is serial. I'm going to keep this one. Hey, Andrew, it ain't coming back. Even though I'm going to sit here and slam it, right? Um, because it's 20 CV. I wonder if he'd let me keep this. Uh, but there's, it lockup's good. The one thing I have that's kind of cuckoo with this is, look at, I'm pushing the lock bar as far as I can. I, I can't get it over that detent ball. Um, and it, this has got, by the way, okay, this is supposed to be $849, $849,000. Um, uh, but, uh, and who, who did it? Oh, it ZT Originals, okay. Tune detent system, and I'm going to have to study up on it because, no, I, I don't know how to tune the detent system, and maybe that's why... I can't get this because I've broken it loose. See, here it hits the detent ball, but it won't It won't go over there. No matter how far, this is the maximum I can disengage the lock bar, okay? Because it's got an over-travel stop, and it still won't bump over there. Strange. Uh, design flow is nice. Blade to handle length. Super lightweight, and at least they did this. On the back okay at least gave that little extra and wouldn't have done any good to do it here because you got pocket clip but yes I like this because front and back front and back hello folks front and back 
Okay, it's possible. Uh, whatever. Um, subframe, reversible pocket clip. That's nice, uh, especially on a highfalutin knife. And then KVT, uh, all that kind of stuff. So ceramic, uh, bead blasted steel pivot, nut, blue anodized, titanium tube spacers, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and specs is the next page, which is really important because the weight, 2.9 ounces, 20 CV uh, blade, 3.4 inch uh, blade. And, uh, you know, what is it overall? 8.1. So there we are right in that formulaic area of, I mean, if you want something super light, but 20 CV, classy looking, and I do like the design on it then maybe this is for you, but then when you start, I mean, I don't know what the map is going to be on it, but I'm, I'm really thinking I don't want to go more than, much more than $200, $220 on this. And I have a feeling this is going to be closer to $260 to $280, you know, considering that that's the original uh, suggested uh, so, I mean, that's up to you and hopefully you can get a deep carry to replace and, you know, blades we love always comes out with the, you know, the screw sets, especially on ZT and stuff. So you'll probably be able to get blue titanium anodized or, you know, bronze or purple ones and this and that. So that'll be interesting, but I can't get this to just drop because I can't get over the detent. Now it is. Once I get that, it's not bad. So, I don't get it. Period. It's centered. It's pure carbon fiber, that's for sure. So, check it out. Standoffs. You know, the, just a lot of the ZT stuff. I, uh, the knives I keep that I have, that I like, I, I, I really like having a backspacer. I think that really completes the look of a knife. And I know standoffs are kind of sexy in a way. But for something like this, I think a carbon fiber backspacer would have been nice. And or a titanium in blue. That would have made it more for me than this open two slabs and some standoffs. Especially at this price, so just just me. Okay, I'm always talking price, but I think that there's a you know, it's important. Now, the 308. Now, of course, this is new for 2021, but it's not new, right? It came out last year. I was at the shot show. I was with Andrew. We talked about it. It's the 308. Now, the thing is, it was tan. Okay. And then the backside was silver titanium. Let me see if I've got that. And this is another $400. So you know what the price is on the 308, right? So you can figure that 762 probably going to be about the same. Um, and did I have a... I wanted to see if I threw a picture. I'm going to get past this real quick. See, there's the back... There's the front. So it wasn't a striped blade. It was tan. And the back was silver. I mean, I don't mind it. Oh, and there it is, 300 now. Oops. Uh, so, yeah, these will probably be somewhere around there or less, I imagine. But, yeah, I, would, I think a lot of guys, I know several that really like this tiger stripe stuff. And then here's what they did right with this. A lot of things. First of all, yes, this is a G10 scale on the front. I would have preferred titanium to match this in materials, but it still matches color. Okay, so that's forgivable. Backspacer, that's plus or minus depending on who you are because this is in the tradition of the ZT. 0300 and 0301, which, by the way, I've got pictures of, right? There's, I've had one of those. I've had one of these. And then I think they had a model also that had tan front G10 scale. And the back was black titanium. So the problem I had with this one and the tan one is the back is black. Okay. Now, with the OO, 
uh, than the 0300, uh, the back was black as well. So it was totally black, right? And it was assisted opening S30V steel. Now this is 20 CV. This is CVT bearings. So this is not assisted. So it's way more fidget friendly. It's the same size basically, because this is 3.75 inch blade. Okay. Bingo bango. Yeah. And I mean, almost a four inch cutting edge on that crazy dog at 100 millimeters and overall almost nine inches. You know, you're talking 22 and a half centimeters and it is a, some poundage, right? So let's check out that. But see, it's in that Ken Onion Mick Strider tradition is what it is. They kind of I mean, they might have kind of ripped them off, actually. Uh, cause I, but I don't know. I didn't see the designer on this, but I think this may have been in originals. Uh, 198 grams and 7 ounces. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a crazy trunk of, of insanity. And, oh, back, back one page here because it'll tell you who the designer is. And it just says ZT original. So it's, yeah, it's not really Onion Strider, even though it's an Onion Strider to me, which is nice. And they changed up the blade. I like this swedge here. Uh, really, to tell you the truth, the 308 was my favorite release they had last year. These little, I don't know, slip joints, and, and then the little 22 ZZ, zero, oh, oh, two, two, tiny little thing. No, 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 that's not ZT to me. This is ZT. This is ZT. It's called Bring Some. Come Bring Some. Overbuilt, tufty, roughy. okay? Now I'm going to tell you what I don't like about it after I do this. Um, check it out. Titanium, hard steel lock bar, blah, 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 made in USA, great, Teflon steel puck, blah, 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 coated, blah, 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 and that, okay? Get it? Now, and you can pause and read this stuff. All right, but you got CPM 20 CV, uh, so 96 centimeters, 9.6 centimeters, baloney, that's closer to 100, but okay, I mean 10 centimeter blade, but uh, you know. Uh, 6.9 ounces. Yeah, trying to be kind, aren't they? But, you know, the DLC coating, all that, I like that. Um, there's just one thing about this. Check this out. I, I mean, you guys that have a 308 in the tan, maybe you know, right? Okay, let me pull this in here. You hear that? Now, it locks up tight and it's good, okay? I'm not I'm not saying anything about that. It was just like when I first started flipping this, it felt like something was jangling. And it was. And I'm going, "Why is it doing that?" And so I was looking in here and it looks, when it drops, it's hitting the detent ball there. But what it's hitting going forward, I don't know. I haven't taken apart and I'm not going to take this one apart. But that, that kind of freaks me out. I don't know. I, if, it's, if it's kicking into this cutaway area, which I think it is, so it's kind of a double whammy going through there uh i'm not digging that maybe they should have not uh didn't done the cutaway in the flipper tab or not as much of the flipper tab should have been in there okay um but i think the detent itself is fine and this kicks right over the detent ball i mean there it is but just you know where i set it loose right there it's over and it just falls over with you just like that maybe a little guillotine-ish 
but this is the, this is the dog right here. This is it, as far as I'm concerned. Of all the knives, there you go, buddy. There's ZT. That's what ZT means to me, right there. And right and left hand. And I'm sure you can get a deep carry to go with that too. Big old standoffs. It's a hoss. It's a heavy duty. You know, so look at that pivot. I like it. Yeah. It's some tufty, right? So what do they, I wonder if they give you the tool for that or if you just got to figure that out. Because you got no torques. I, I don't know what you'd put on there. I know I could figure something out or just even pliers, right? Or, uh, you know, because it's flat on both sides here. So you could just put a wrench and turn it. Actually, I just wouldn't want to mark it up. So, yeah, cool. I like it. And, you know, I didn't get this um, from Dominic, but I would have been interesting. Although I think I'd have been disappointed because this one is 3.25 inch and under 8 inches overall. Let's see the specs here. Yeah, 2.9 ounces and 7.6 inches overall. So to me, that's just too small for that. I want this to be as big as a 308. I want it to be 9 inches overall length. That would be the Haas. That'd be the knife I would buy. And look at that, 275. But of course, it's a small knife. So they did this, but they kind of chickened out in, in making it the full size of the triple nine so oh well that that's too bad so that's the end of my game here these are all the knives i got from dominic at uh, kershaw zt um but this is the only one of this group that i remember being a collaborative with a known designer jens anzo unfortunately in my estimation the capsule has kind of the lowest quality of everything uh the gfn here on the scales and 8CR13. Otherwise, I like the design really well, but this may come in pretty handy and it's not gonna be very expensive. Deep carry pocket clip, but right hand only. Too bad they couldn't have figured out a way to flick that. But you know, with this kind of box cutter thing, I, don't, I just don't see how they could have done it. Um, but this one, being the end game, I thought maybe the winner of the pack, uh, really this and maybe the Highball XL, because both of these knives have D2, they're not uh, assisted opening, uh, they're pretty balanced front to back in the looks, okay? They're not real big, they're not real small. Uh, the design flow is nice, and this one is super ass fidget friendly. And take a look at the blade; it looks so traditional, like this would be on like a buck knife or something, some something, right? And so it does look very traditional, but it's so easy to flick in and out. So that's great. And then, yeah, the end game's got a little bit more going on design wise, so somewhat intriguing in its own. All right, now, this one, the collateral, it's D2 as well, but it's speed safe. So, and then they didn't bring the carbon fiber over on the back to do anything with it. So, a little less uh, desirable for me personally. This one is kind of a love-hate thing because I love the fact that they would do the Strata in the XL version, but then they didn't bring this design. They could have covered this and put a screw there to take the cover off, access the pit, the pivot. And then they, I think it would have been nice with G10 on both sides. Or really, forget the G10. Make this steel on this side. I know it'd be heavier, but it would, I mean, I think it'd, it'd be nice. Uh, it'd be more balanced. And, you know, a big old knife like this, that's right up my alley, especially with D2. The bracket's probably my biggest disappointment because even though I like cleavers traditionally, they didn't bring this to the back. They just made it all work on the back and all party on the front, right and left hand, okay, but 8CR13. 
So no D2, it's speed safe, no KVT, nah, nah. The ZT, these two knives, of course, this is not really a new one. The 308 came out last year. This one is really fascinating. The 762, it's so lightweight. It's interesting with the subframe lock and everything, and the materials are top grade. It's just not my vision of overbuilt, you know? And that's always what I've thought of as ZT. And more like the, the 0300 or 0301, the Strider, Onion, Big Dog, Crazy, Fat, Overbuilt, Chunky, Brutal type knives. Not that they have to live in that world all the time. So maybe this would be for you, but I just don't see it competing with so many other mid or kind of high-end production knives, maybe from Pena and uh, Fair and Forge and everybody else to try and compete there. This is where I think the party lays for ZT and the future is overbuilt, you know, chunky, uh, you know, beefy, 20 CV, uh, and, and make them look good front to back. Don't just do this. I mean, so many people are getting away from this kind of thing. Different on the back than it is on the front. So many people are getting away from that now that you, I think you need to leave that in the past and start getting some balance back in there. And this one does it for me. I like this one. I think this could be one of the few ZTs that I would have in a keeper, uh, keeper collection. All right. Take care, my friends. We be gone. We be gone. But we'll leave you to it. And, you know, make your comments below. Interesting group, that's for sure. And you know what we do. We love them knives, so you guys stay sharp.